Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here with you, and thanks again, the family, for this great opportunity. Uh, so, uh, quantified diagnosis. Uh, what uh, what is the the role of this uh, data? What is the impact in the healthcare? I will start with a clinical case, just to change a little bit of your uh, um, conference. Uh, Dominique, 30 years old. He ca she came to me a few years ago uh, uh, to seeking help for um, uh, chronic fatigue and uh, low-level iron. She has diagnosed an anemia, and uh, we couldn't. She couldn't uh, find any solution. She had seen many doctors, and uh, still have this. Uh, she had this uh, this problem, and. Um, when she came to my, she explained that his fatigue doesn't uh, stop her from working or seeing his friends, her friends, uh, but it um, demanded pretty a big effort to, uh, to have a normal life. And uh, she's not very happy about it. She was 30 and she, was, uh, she had plenty of projects of, uh, of her life. When she arrived in my office, uh, she was pretty skeptical and angry uh, because um, she couldn't understood that 21st century couldn't uh, couldn't solve this uh, this small problem in the, her opinion uh, she heard about a, f a lot of uh, progress that medicine makes and uh, despite this uh, no one could uh, solve this uh, this problem uh, what uh, what happened uh, I, uh, of course, I, I do some uh, some tests. So a few tests later, what I what did I find? Uh, I uh, it was confirmed this anemia, and she was well uh, had this uh, low level uh, iron. Uh, but I also discovered other deficiencies in the, some other minerals, other deficiencies in uh, vitamins, and. Uh, what I discovered most, uh, she had many, many food intolerances. Uh, she had so many that uh, I remember very well at that time, uh, the lab called me, uh, they were very intrigued. what happened with this patient, uh, does she have any cancer, does she have any serious disease, because they never saw the results like this in their entire career. Um, What's happened next? We, we start the treatment, she avoid this food, and uh, she was doing very, very well. The question it is, it is, why since then we didn't look deeper? Why uh, we are happy, I said we, the, the medical doctors, uh, were satisfied with the basic checkup, and um, maybe they uh, were too optimistic to believe that this uh, problem uh, just be solved little by little with a good diet and uh, with the right iron supplements, which doesn't happen actually before. The second story is about Jean Francois, Jean Francois, uh, 42 years old, who came also to my office, very um, in very bad shape, very um, desperate. Uh, she was complaining of uh, chronic abdominal pain, very severe pain. And uh, he was saying that actually uh, has uh, other more, um, even more um, uh, bore, uh, barring um, uh, condition. He has some uh, intestinal troubles. Several times per week, she has severe uh, diarrhea, diarrhea crisis. And uh, he insisted to call it crisis because for him it was a disaster at his work and the social life and so on. Uh, and actually, he lives with these symptoms since many, many years, actually uh, about 10 years. And of course, in the, uh, this period of time, he uh, saw many doctors, he had many lab checks, he had many exams, colonoscopy, and whatever you can imagine. Um, and no explanation of, uh, for, this, uh, for his condition. So it, uh, he was very frustrated. And uh, when he came uh, to my office, um, he was 
very depressed, actually, um, with some suicidal idea, and very anxious, and I was very much hesitating to send him to emergency psychiatric room because I was really uh, very worried about him. And actually, the, the conclusion of all of, all of these doctors was there's uh, no explanation. The origin of your pain is psychosomatic. So you have to rest, avoid stress, and uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, you, you're going to improve like, like this. Uh, what's, uh, what's happened for him? I, uh, I convinced him to, to do more tests, even he, uh, he was also very skeptical because he said, okay, George Pompidou, they did me all the tests you can imagine. And uh, I didn't do anything magical. I just checked yeah, his intestinal flora in the other way. And you cannot see very <coughs> well on this picture, but actually he, <coughs> he uh, has what we call uh, leaky gut syndrome, such a, uh, somehow of uh, virtual holes in his intestine. And uh, all this explains his, uh, his symptoms. Uh, once again, the same question, why we didn't look more data before? Why all these uh, uh, gastroenterologists, all these psychiatrists didn't think to, the, to have the whole picture? Uh, by the way, with the right treatment, uh, his condition was uh, really improved very quickly. Uh, actually, he was very impressed that in less than two weeks, she, uh, he has uh, absolutely uh, no pain and his intestinal transit was almost back to normal. So I shared with you some uh, uh, small part of my clinical experience, but I'm not the only one who figured out a problem of this. Uh, I will show you an uh, experience that the investor um, uh, uh, that you see in the pictures, and I forgot the name. <laughs> uh, I will remember right away. Uh, so what he did, he, uh, he showed uh, uh, data, a clinical case uh, from cardiology, uh, uh, from a patient cardio in cardiology. She's, uh, he saw the data uh, to 40 cardiologists. And what happened, half of them uh, answered uh, the question it was, um, he, uh, this patient gonna, must have or not a surgical uh, intervention, a cardiac surgery. And half of this patient answered yes, and half of, uh, half of this cardiologist answered yes, and half answered no, which is, was very disturbing. But he did more. Um, after two years, he showed absolutely the same clinical case, the exactly same da data, to the same doctor, and guess what? What's happened? 40% of these doctors changed their mind. And uh, he said that uh, he can uh, give 100 examples like this. So, you, I suppose most of you are not doctors, so don't panic, everything is, uh, it will be all right. Why doctors are not data-driven? Dri there are um, many reasons for this. First of all, the medicine have many compartments. We have more and more specialists and specialties. We have infra specialities, and we have less and less doctors who put all this data together. In the past, we have the family doctors who uh, used to, to globalize all this. And after, the GP is supposed to do, do it, but in reality, they are doing the less and less. So, all this data, first of all, they are not put it together as we uh, should be. Second reason, collect and manage data, it's hard for the doctors. Believe me, it's not easy anyway. Uh, and. Um, most of them, sharing them, it's even harder. Uh, just uh, for your record, the, the, another uh, small problem, but it's not, it's not uh, that small as this, the labs, just simply like this, uh, like this, 
still send to the doctors the paper records, the, the result in paper the, by mailing, uh, uh, ordering mailing, or if they sending by email, they sending in PDF files, not in Excel files. So we cannot treat this data. So I will dream to have very nice uh, pictures for, uh, for the patients, but we cannot treat this data. And uh, they, it seems that uh, they are not allowed to send to the doctors uh, other files than the PDF to not modify the, the labs, the numbers. Not lastly, the cost of this uh, special test are, um, are expensive. And in France, patients are used to the social security, are used to the fact when they go to the labs, they don't pay much. So um, when it uh, comes the idea to ask them to do new tests, they never heard about it. Uh, in their entourage, any doctors heard about it, never heard about such a test. They, it's normal. They, uh, and in addition, these tests are expensive. Uh, they are a little bit skeptical about it. Global view in medicine looks like an evil view. What does it mean? This uh, approach of global or holistic medicine it's been seen a little bit like an um, uh, approach who come from Eastern medicine, from Chinese medicine, and uh, it doesn't, um, it's not been very encouraging for a patient who's, uh, who are thinking a serious doctor with a um, um, uh, good scientific base. And um, Another problem is it's even some doctors are, um, are skeptical about it because uh, they, are, uh, they are not used to introducing your, in their practice the, the new, this new technology um, that uh, are very, very um, fascinating, but uh, they are uh, in expectation. So, a little secret that maybe you don't know. Diagnosis is still an art, it's not a science in medicine of our days. And uh, I'm not saying that medicine is an art. I'm saying that uh, part of uh, medical acts are uh, still done with uh, not uh, a very high level of uh, scientific methodology and hopefully it's going to come with the new, new era of these uh, technologies and robotics and so on. That's why doctors are so conservative. So it's, uh, it's difficult to, to introduce, uh, to, to change the, the, the mentalities. But... Um, here I will I'll present you very quickly uh, how uh, the data changed my practice and why I wasn't so scared about all these uh, barriers. So, um, what I'm doing in, the, in my daily practice? Uh, just a few words. My, uh, my consultation, I'd like to name it until, not, uh, until now, personal preventive and personalized medicine. But uh, I will borrow, I think, this term of differential medicine because I am very excited about it. Uh, well, it makes me easier to do differential diagnosis and choose the right diagnosis. And also differential because it's different and it's, um, it spokes very much about this uh, time of uh, transformation area of medicine. So what I'm doing, I'm, first of all, I'm collecting data like any doctors. And I like to do a very deep anamnesis, uh, which is the story, the medical story of the patient, of his uh, family, and the, uh, also environment, and also the habits of the, of the patient, which is very important for me. You'll see why. After this, I collect biological data. As you know, uh, in addition of uh, classical um, um, checkup, 
for sugar, lipids, um, hormones, vitamins, and so on, I used to prescribe, in addition, some specific tests. Uh, as you saw before, I, uh, I like very much to check the intestinal flora, uh, the food intolerances, sometimes oxidative stress, and as you see here, I uh, used to do also genetic tests. A uh, little parenthesis again about the, the, these tests are, it's pretty sad because they're still very expensive and it's not uh, equality for the all patients. What I'm doing with all this data, uh, it's uh, helped me to have a big picture of diagnosis. And uh, diagnosis for what? To have a personalized treatment. And after this, I like very much to have a close follow-up. Uh, you, you see here a table that patient must to complete on the, every day if uh, he can. And uh, it's important for me because I, I see uh, how um, the patients, um, how is, it is the evolution of the patients. Also the patient became more motivated for the habits changement and uh, it's, um, uh, it's very, in general, uh, he likes very much to see the, the progression of, the, of their symptoms and of the, his evolution. And for me, it's important to adapt properly the, the treatment and also to support him on, for changement of, uh, of his habits. So, there are many uh, tools, but... Um, uh, not many are compliant and uh, are not designed for it. So what I'm doing, I have to hack it, uh, some of them uh, at my <laughs> small level. Uh, as you see before, I use this table. I use Google spreadsheet, which is a nightmare to manage uh, many tables. So hard life for doctors. <laughs> But there are some hopes. There are a lot of uh, uh, apps in health uh, who are going out uh, on a daily basis. And um, I think you already heard before, uh, it seems that we have today like 1,100 apps in health, something like this. And um, you heard also yesterday, Vivek uh, shows us, uh, us very, uh, very nicely explain how Apple and other big actors became a um, health company. And this is very serious. Uh, as you see here, the investors also are uh, very interesting, uh, even are over interesting about this field of medtech and uh, uh, healthcare. As you see here, uh, in one year is some kind of boom of this uh, interesting interest, and um, I think it's gonna uh, go in this uh, in this way. So maybe something will go out from uh, from all this, and uh, in the meantime, I will keep hacking tools and scale my differential medicine practice, and I am look for forward to. Um, have uh, more tools for my practice and also for uh, uh, industry of medicine because we are living a very exciting time of transformation of medicine. Thank you very much.